Hey vinyl friends and vinyl community, it's Brian from Brian's Vinyl Records and it's time for my April 2023 vinyl haul. Let's start off with some unofficial releases that I picked up. So if you don't know, some stores are calling these European imports or EU imports or anything like that. Don't be fooled, they are counterfeits. Unofficial pressings, not by the record companies. But they're out there, and you know some of them sound good. Some sound like crap. It's really taking a chance. But I picked up a couple that, um, or a few that I thought wouldn't get any kind of vinyl release anytime soon. And if they do, awesome. I'll pick them up the official release because they will definitely sound better. But we'll start with the Counting Crows' "This Desert Life." If you know anything about this album, there was one vinyl pressing. And it goes for over $1,000 on Discogs now. I've seen this thing started when I started looking for it. It was around $300. And I've seen it climb and climb and climb every year. Now, I don't know if anyone's actually buying these things. I highly doubt it. I don't know anyone who wants to pay $1,000 for This Desert Life by the Crowning Crows. But that's what it's going for on Discogs right now. This is an unofficial pressing, a European import on kind of a cream color or an off-white colored vinyl. And it sounds pretty good. Uh, no complaints from me, it sounds fine. And you know, it's just one of those albums that I'm not gonna get in my hands unless County Crows start reissuing their catalog, which I haven't seen them do anything but the same several albums that they put out all this time. So hoping for a reissue on this, I will happily buy that one and replace this version. But for now, just so I can listen to it and have it in my collection, that's what I did. And the same goes for this one. This is Counting Crows' Hard Candy album. This is a great album. Um, I believe it came out around 2007-ish uh, or somewhere in there. Maybe in the early 2000s. I can't even remember anymore. But I think this is one of the better works, especially after the first three albums that they put out. This is definitely right up there with them. And I really enjoy listening to this one. Uh, always have wanted it on vinyl. It's never, I don't think, had a vinyl release. So this is the European import slash counterfeit slash unofficial pressing of it. And it sounds pretty good. It's cool. It's got this, they call it red vinyl. That looks a little orange in uh, person to me. So I'll call it an orange vinyl. I like it. Um, one of my favorite of the Counting Crows album, probably my second or third favorite of their albums would be this one. Saw them in concert on this tour, and it was great. And so, uh, yeah, nice to pick that up. And then I picked this up. I recently sold my music on vinyl pressing of this album because I figured I had the CD. I have the, the movie. I, I didn't know, and the price of this has skyrocketed. So I sold it, and then I was like, well, there's an unofficial pressing. It supposedly sounds, someone said, just as good as the MLV pressing. So I'll just pick it up for a lot cheaper and have it in my collection in case I wanted to, you know, spin it, which I do from time to time. Allison Chains Unplugged, probably my personal favorite of the Unplugged series is this album here. Um, ridiculous money it goes for. I can't imagine they're not going to reissue this at some point, but... Uh, I'll tell you now, I got this. It sounds pretty good. Definitely does not sound as good as the MLB pressing, uh, but pretty good and good enough for me that when I wanna pull this out, I can spin it and enjoy it. It's on kind of a, a purple colored vinyl. Looks black in there, but there you go. Kind of a purple or mauve vinyl and a fake hype sticker up here, which I think is kind of hilarious, but uh, they did a pretty, pretty decent job, and it sounds all right. So those are my unofficial pressings that I did pick up this month. Let's get into some new releases that came out in the month of April that I picked up. We'll start with Melanie Martinez's Portals album. Melanie Martinez was on The Voice in the, one of the early seasons. Um, had the split-colored hair and the gap in her teeth, uh, if you remember that at all. And just a fantastic voice. Very interesting singer, uh, very dark topics a lot of times. And I've really enjoyed a lot of her solo work that she's put out. 
since being on The Voice. So I picked this up from Target on red vinyl. Sounds pretty good. And another decent release by her. Um, I don't think anything can match Dollhouse or the K-12 album that she put out. But it's pretty good. Also grabbed the new Nickelback album. This is called Get Rollin'. Uh, probably their best effort in many, many years. Uh, I really liked probably the third, fourth, and fifth albums that they put out. And then haven't really followed a lot of it since. Never really got into anything that they put out afterwards. But I was told that this is a really, really good album. And uh, so I picked it up. And this is an indie exclusive on the orange vinyl. And yeah, it's a pretty good album. It's, it's got a great vibe to it. And if you like Nickelback, I think you'll enjoy that album. One of my favorites that I've discovered uh, over the last couple years has been Rustin Kelly. He put out his brand new album, The Weakness. I believe this came out towards the end of March. I picked it up in April. And uh, he doesn't disappoint. He's kind of like a... Um, alt country folky country with emo put in there uh, but i just love his music i love his writing and uh this is no different good stuff rust and kelly the weakness and of course who didn't go out and pick this up metallica's brand new album 72 seasons this one is uh on the standard black wax i did not uh, or no actually this is the indie violet wax i forgot um doesn't look violet in the sleeve but it is kind of like a purple if you hold it up enough to the light you can definitely see the purple in it um really i think a really good album from metallica i like it a lot really enjoyed it i love hardwired i even loved uh death magnetic uh, so everything after saint anger to me has been good this one sounds killer and really happy to have picked this up as well some other albums that i picked up some reissues i grabbed nickelback's the state this is their second album i was not familiar with this album um i have never heard it actually uh, i've gotten in, into them when they kind of broke on the radio but this is a rocktober release from 2017 i picked this up from riverbend records from billy hurst and uh yeah Super happy to have that. It's a pretty good album. A lot rawer than some of the stuff that came out afterwards. I also grabbed the Jackson 5's Ultimate Collection. This has been on my want list for quite a long time. And uh, then it went out of stock uh, everywhere. And finally came back in stock on Amazon. It was a little more expensive than I really wanted to pay. But I decided what the hell and picked it up finally because I've been wanting to get this for a while so standard black wax 2lp a nice gatefold and uh yeah jackson 5 ultimate collection is a it's a really good really well done compilation here's another one that's been on my list for just quite a while my brother-in-law has this i always want to listen to it every time i go over to his house because i'm jealous that he has a copy and i don't um this has shown up a couple times on some of the Facebook groups I'm in that sell. And uh, for some reason, the last time it sold out from under me and I, I told them go ahead and sell it because I wasn't ready to commit to the, the dollar amount that it was going for. And for some reason, the person who bought it was unable to pay. So I got uh, offered a second chance at a lower price. And I jumped on it because I was really sad that I missed out on it the first time. This is pretty cool. This is Dangerous Toys, their debut album, and also their second album, Hellacious Acres, in one package. It's a German pressing. Uh, they put it out one time, and uh, it. I think it sounds great. Um, I think it sounds really good. And yeah, so happy to have both the debut and the second album now from Dangerous Toys to go along with my copy of Pissed, which is their third album uh, that they put out. So happy to have them all finally on vinyl. A couple other things that I picked up. I picked up a copy of Buffalo Springfield's Retrospective, the best of Buffalo Springfield. Very good compilation from them. This is an older pressing 
of the album. Sounds fantastic. Got that from Billy at Riverbend Records as well. And also grabbed this from Billy. This is the Cats. Um, I guess you could call it soundtrack, but it's the stage and screen snippets from the musical, including, of course, the big hit Memory from that Broadway musical. And uh, my mom was really into Andrew Lloyd Webber stuff growing up. And so uh, whenever I see these pop up for a good price, I try and grab them just for nostalgic reasons. And, you know, brings back a lot of good memories um, sitting around the house with that blaring in the background while we do other stuff. All right, next up, let's look at some of the original mass recording stuff I picked up recently. Uh, some of the stuff I've been waiting for got put back in uh, production and they were finally released again. So I grabbed Keb Moe's Keb Mo album, great country blues guitar player and songwriter and singer. Um, if you don't know Keb Moe, I, I can't recommend checking him out enough. Just fantastic stuff. And so this one popped up and I couldn't pass it up again. So happy to add that. And then this one popped up as well. Jefferson Airplanes, Serialistic Pillow. Uh, after watching uh, Melinda Murphy talk about her pressing of this album, I had to finally pull the trigger and get it myself. And it does sound absolutely fantastic. I have an older version of this on vinyl and it, it sounds great, but not anywhere near this. So super excited to have that. And then this popped up in a group I'm in that for sale, and I just couldn't pass this up. I've been looking for this for a while, and it's still available every once in a blue moon, but I haven't seen it in stock for a while, but it's Weezer's Pinkerton album. So super happy to finally have that come in for me. And uh, now I just am looking for the green album. I've got a lead on one. I just haven't pulled the trigger yet. I'm probably going to regret that because someone will probably pull the trigger out from under me. But um, that's how it goes sometimes. So Weezer Pinkerton. One big grail that I picked up is Motley Crue's Dr. Feelgood. This is an original 1989 pressing. U.S. Press uh, sounds so good, way better, I think, than any of the reissues that they put out. Um, I had the 2016 reissue, and this is so much better. I've been getting all of the Motley Crue original five albums on Japanese pressings, but this one never had a true Japanese pressing. It only had a promo from Japan pressing, and so I picked up an original U.S. pressing and I'm super happy I did. It sounds so good. And then Dolly Parton is teamed up with Vinyl Me Please to introduce the Vinyl Me Parton series. And uh, I flip-flopped on it a few times and finally just decided to screw it. I'm going to get it. There are so many uh, albums in that series that are going to be coming out that have never had a vinyl release or that the vinyl is super, super tough to find and so i just said you know that'll be great and i'll take the other ones that they have and i can i can either decline them and trade them for something else or get them and vitally please does a phenomenal job on their releases so it's going to probably sound better than the one i have anyway and the first one they started with was my tennessee mountain home this is one i hunted forever and ever and finally found a copy and my copy is uh, pretty good, pretty decent shape. But man, does this thing sound absolutely fantastic. It's on this kind of, they call it Smoky Mountain. Uh, what do they call it? Smoky Mountain uh, Galaxy vinyl. Just a green kind of, you know, vinyl. I'm not sure where they come up with a name for that. But anyway, uh, sounds phenomenal. Super happy with the pressing. So I'll probably end up selling my early press of this album and keeping this one in my collection. The next one to come out is a album called Little Sparrow, which I don't believe has ever had a vinyl pressing before. So I'm really looking forward to getting that one. That one comes out middle of May. So I'm excited about that. Okay, that does it for all that stuff. Let's get into what everyone 
knows I'm all about these days, Japanese pressings. We'll start with a couple that I got with no OB strips. First being this one, Almond Brothers. Wipe the windows, check the oil, dollar gas. Um, this is a collection, I believe, of some live tracks. After the Fillmore East went huge, they pulled out some other tracks from other shows and released this album uh, on uh, with some of those live tracks on it. So, very excited to have that. My copy, old copy, was a little beat up, so nice to replace it. White Snake, the uh, self-titled album. Uh, this one came with a, a double pack, uh, which I'll show you the other one later in the stack. Can't remember how far down it is, but I bought them together, the two of them together, for a really, really good price because this one was missing the Obi strip, and I'm okay with that. Um, so, White Snake's self-titled album. I got Rick Springfield's Working Class Dog. This is by far the only Rick Springfield I really need. I used to collect his albums and then just realized I only listened to this one anyway. So I sold off his other albums and this popped up. I think this cost me like 10 bucks. So I can't say no to that. Just a great album. Boss Skaggs here. This one is, um, what was this called? I think they always start covering it up. Uh, Silk Degrees. Um, not never really got into Boss Skaggs. I ended up receiving this album, not this particular one, but this album in as kind of a bumper album and decided to listen to it. And my God, the production on this album is absolutely phenomenal. And it's a really good album. So I saw this pop up on, on a Japanese sale. And again, I think I paid maybe 11 bucks or something for it, 10 bucks. I don't even remember. It was really cheap. Um, figuring that why not? This is minty collectible and uh it probably sound better than the one i have which sounds really good so why not foreigner head games so i've been going through and kind of trying to replace my foreigner albums with either uh mofi presses or japanese presses either one because they both sound fantastic so this one i picked up on a japanese press so happy to have that this is a japan only simon and garfunkel kind of greatest hits it's called gold disc and so it's got a bunch of their top songs on it only released in japan so happy to have that i also picked up santana's festival album um i think this album is absolutely fantastic this one i got really cheap because of all the foxing on the cover a lot of foxing on this one but it's got an intact ob strip that looks really good and uh, the vinyl is just beautiful. So I, no brainer here. Again, dirt cheap because of that. And picked that up because I really enjoy that album. This is the only other Bruce album that I ever want or ever need. Tunnel Love is my favorite Bruce album. I never got into him on any of his other stuff. I've tried, it just doesn't do anything for me. But this album I do like, Born in the USA. This is really cool because it is still in shrink yep in shrink bruce springsteen the obi has never been touched by a human hand it's sitting there underneath that shrink wrap super cool pick this up for a dirt cheap price especially for the condition it's in and uh happy to have that in my collection all right kiss lick it up this is cool it has the false cover on it of course um they did that with a couple of their albums the elder being another and this one and so how that works is you tuck the sleeve in here and it acts as both the ov a false cover and the insert for the album with the lyrics in both japanese and english and then of course the album cover that everybody knows is right there underneath the false obi uh pretty cool concept um i think they did it only on this one and the elder the rest of them are pretty basic standards but pick this one up i like this album quite a bit so happy to have it in my collection japanese and um hopefully by the time the may final haul comes around 
I will have completed my KISS Japanese pressings by then. I'm that close. Also picked this up again. I got this for, uh, I think I paid $21 for this album. And this is a usually a pretty expensive album to get. But again, it's missing the Obi strip. So there's a lot of people who don't want these because they're missing that Obi strip. And I don't care necessarily. I can have replicas made if I really wanted the Obi strip. And I have done that before on certain albums. But in this case, I'll probably just leave it be as is. This sounds great. So I recently bought the box set that Ozzy put out called Blizzard of Oz box set or something like that. And it had both Blizzard and Diary remastered back in, I think it was 2011. And uh, I thought they sounded fantastic. I put this on and then put my remaster from 2011 on and this thing blew it out of the water, blew it out of the water. So, um, this is now my go-to for Diary of a Madman. Sounds fantastic. Uh, super happy to have it. And like I said, I think it made 21 bucks, which if you know that album, that is dirt cheap. Grab Montrose's Paper Money album. Of course, Sammy Hager in the band at this time. One of the two albums he did with the band Montrose. Um, so grab that one. That was a steal as well. And then here's the other half of the White Snake. This is White Snake Slide In. And this is the UK mix. So if you know anything about this album, it was released in the UK first. And then David Coverdale decided to add two guitarists to the band and re record some of the parts and remix the whole album. Um, and that's what the American version was. There is a Japanese pressing with the American version on it. Um, it is a, got a gold um, outline around it, and it does tell you it's the U.S. mix on it. But the other versions of the Japanese pressing have the U.K. mix, which is not standard for Japanese pressings. Japanese pressings typically follow the U.S. pressings and U.S. and Canadian pressings versions. But in this case, they put the U.K. mix. It is quite different from what we're used to from this album. So it's kind of cool to listen to both versions of them. Um, Cause like I said, they redid some of the parts when John Sykes uh, joined the band and all that. Pick this up. This is Almond Brothers, Brothers and Sisters, a fantastic Almond Brothers album. My copy was pretty well uh, beat up on cover and vinyl. And so this popped up in a sale and I decided to go ahead and pull the trigger on it because mine was so beat up. It sounds awesome. Gatefold uh, vinyl, standard black, and uh, yeah, Japanese pressing. This is a reissue, by the way. Grabbed Journey Frontiers. What can you say about this album? Separate Ways and uh, Faithfully, I believe, are the big hits on this album. Grab that for a song because it was available. Also picked up Karate Kid Part 2. Uh, last month, I think I showed you Karate Kid Part 1 in Japan, which was called Moment of Truth instead of the Karate Kid. But when Karate Kid Part 2 came out, instead of calling it Moment of Truth Part 2, for some reason they went with the American version of Karate Kid Part 2. I thought that was kind of interesting. Now, I personally think that this soundtrack is much better than the Karate Kid Part 1 soundtrack. Um, so I, I got this one, had to pick it up. Also, I grabbed Superman 2, another really good soundtrack to the Superman series and probably the best Superman movie of the Chris, Christopher Reeves era, I think. Um, but this is really cool and I love the artwork on this one. I think it looks fantastic. And yeah, so I'll grab that. This is considered a grail to many people. This is Queen's Reich's The Warning. Um, I got I I I don't know if I did really well on this or if I paid about what it usually goes for, but uh, I picked it up and um, you know I listened to it and it's not my favorite uh, Queen's Reich by any means, but it's good and fun to have in the collection. I love the cover. I mean, the cover is absolutely fantastic. And last but certainly not least. This completed my collection of Japanese pressings for ACDC. Um, and this is still sealed. 
brand spanking new Japanese pressing a power up uh, I didn't think I'd ever see this one uh, because it's fairly, I mean, it's fairly new. It's only a couple years old when they put this out. And uh, you just don't see the Japanese pressings very often. And so when it popped up, I had to pick it up. I had to get it. And so I did. I was the only person who bid on it, which was thankful to me because I didn't want to go too high on it. But uh, I did pay for it. And it's still sealed. And I think it'll probably remain sealed since I have three other versions of this album. I don't know that I need to open this up. I might open it at some point and play it just to hear how it sounds versus the American version. But uh, this does complete what I consider the Japanese collection of ACDC. The only one, of course, that I don't have is Jailbreak. And the reasoning being that it's, it's a five song EP and I'm not going to pay $125 for a five song EP. To me, that is just not worth the money. And uh, I had a hard enough time paying $20 for a US copy of the album. So I'm not paying $125 for a Japanese one. Anyway, that is my April 2023 vinyl haul. Tell me what you think about it. What are your favorites from that list, uh, that stack of albums? Um, and yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new, click the subscribe button. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. I love interacting with everybody in the vinyl community. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, keep spinning, vinyl friends.